Hello and welcome again to the Writer Review. <clears throat> this is Eric Corrupt Writer, and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 2007 supernatural thriller titled Premonition. Now, Premonition runs for 96 minutes long. It is directed by Menin Yapo. It is produced by Ashok Amitraj, Adam Shankman, Jennifer Gibgott, Sunil Perkash, and Nick Hampson. The script was done by Bill Kelly. The score was done by Klaus Bedelt. The cinematography by Torsten Lipstock. And the editing was done by Neil Travis. And the stars of the movie are Sandra Bullock, Julianne McMahon, Neil Long, Kate Nelligan, Amber Valletta, Courtney Taylor Burris, and Cheyenne McClure. Now what did I think of this movie? Sadly, with the execution for Premonition, it was good on paper, but it still, however, failed to live up to what could have been an enthralling roller coaster ride filled with mind boggling scenes where our, where our conclusions to be drawn are more likely to be welcomed. This was definitely a movie that was supposed to set the tone for drawing our conclusions. But what did it end up with? One big bundle of misery. So, here is the scenario. Have you ever felt like being stuck in time? Linda Hansen, played by Sandra Bullock, has the unfortunate experience of being in such surroundings. She seems to weave back and forth from the past and the future with little purpose and so much confusion. In many ways, her story can resemble the likes of Kurt Vonnegut's Billy Pilgrim, where one scene of her life swiftly changes back and forth to a point where she's at her wit's end. Her roller coaster ride begins on that tragic Thursday morning where Sheriff Riley, played by Mark McCauley, shows up at her door to tell her the news that her husband Jim, played by Julian McMahon, was killed in a car accident the day before he was scheduled for a business meeting. He was supposed to go on a business trip, but then the sh a sheriff shows up at her door to tell her the news that her husband Jim sadly passed away from a car accident. So the next morning, Linda wakes up so sad and of course it's pretty natural that she's grief strucken by this whole thing. And she is kind of like beside herself in grief. So then by the next morning, Linda wakes up to discover her husband Jim was lying on the couch without a scratch. And the day has also transformed from a Thursday to a Monday. As Linda dis kind of dismisses her events as only just a vivid dream and goes back to sleep. She just thought that, you know... Maybe she made this whole thing up and that today is really a Monday and it's not a Thursday. So she kind of dismisses the idea and then goes back to sleep. By the next morning, Jim is deceased once again. It's Saturday and all her dearest, closest friends are preparing for his funeral while she's clearly not dressed for the occasion. Linda knows there's something fishing going on here, and hopefully, maybe she could find a way to save her husband from his fate. If only she could find a way to manipulate her future through her premonitions. I mean, the movie does transpire the days of the week in a very non-linear fashion. I mean, one minute... It's Thursday and he's dead. The next minute it's Monday and he's alive. Then the next day it's Saturday and he's getting his funeral arrangements prepared. 
then the next day it's Tuesday and he's alive and ready to start the day so she doesn't know what to think but she thinks that by using these by this premonition she could probably find a way to save the man's life now look I'm usually fond of movies with non-linear timelines like the movie Memento among many others heck I gave a similar film that Sandra Bullock starred in a few years ago called The Lake House, a bit of praise that very few people did during its release in 2006. I bear no prejudices when it comes to suspending disbelief. And the duration of the 96 minute long roller coaster of a film, Linda was able to change a few of the outcomes while she was also unsuccessfully not able to rectify all of them. All the while, it seems to lack in any constituent pattern. Her week just goes around back and forth, but the thing is, is that unlike Memento, it doesn't have the rhythm other than just to weave through the plot structure. And even though it was intriguing to see if she could actually change the past, which is virtually impossible, but knowing that this is all a premonition, she probably could have the ability to change the past. Will she succeed? She did try to succeed in some of the things, but she just couldn't succeed in all of them. But the most important thing is, with her premonitions and her negative outlook of the future regarding Jim's fate, do you think she has what it takes to save his life from possible death? It's this movie that really does keep the flow going. But it still lacks the charisma. It still lacks that energy of suspense. It just seems kind of really fly by night, you know, go on with the next day, go on with the past, then you move on to the next day, you know, like one minute he's alive, the next minute he's dead, you go to a next day again, and he's alive again, and then we go to another day where he's dead. So, you know, things like this really, really irks me some. Because I really wanted to enjoy this movie better. But it just did not have the right tools to keep me interested. It, it's a shame really because the idea was, was a wonderful one. It just did not have that same level of fortitude. It did not have that level of intensity to keep this thriller going. So, what do you think of the performances in this movie? Well, when it comes to the performances, Sandra Bullock was really at her A-game here. I'm not going to take that away from her. She was able to capture the painful ordeal of reliving her husband's demise while all performing it on a daily basis in an enigmatic, non-linear perspective. Therefore, she can't fully embody grief like most of us do when a loved one dies. And I can understand that. She's more confused than grief-stricken. And who could blame her? Wouldn't you be confused too if one minute your husband's dead or a loved one's dead and then the next minute he or she is still alive? I would be confused. If I can't fully embody grief. Because knowing that the next morning. He's back. And he's alive. So. Sadly. She can't really. Embody 
the grief because it's just not really fully there. She may look unhinged, but we can forgive her for her confusion she's facing. Um, this movie, of course, is pretty much a Sandra Bullock vehicle. She practically carries the luggage throughout. But that doesn't mean that the supporting cast was bad. In fact, they were also pretty effective. Even though they really did not have very much to do in their roles, they still did what little material was given to them, and they played it to their fullest. Peter Stormare. Yes, that's right, the guy who played the silent Swede from Fargo. Uh, he, he plays a pretty evenly impressive performance as her psychologist, Dr. Norman Roth, who's just as equally baffled as Linda is. He could have came off as the stereotypical passive-aggressive psychologist or psychiatrist because, you know, psychologists, they don't prescribe pills, but a psychiatrist does prescribe pills. Uh, medicine, they are actually licensed MDs. So, he ends up giving her a medication because he's legally permitted to. So that means he's a psychiatrist, not a psychologist. And, uh, you know, he still pulled it off pretty well, you know, and tried his best to be sympathetic. Okay, and he's just as equally baffled as Linda is. Julian McMahon, he turns in a pretty great performance as a husband whose relationship with Linda is on the rocks. Of course, there's that whole speculation that um, he might be having a promiscuous affair with Linda because there's many scenes where at his funeral, uh, she sees an old colleague of his played by Amber Valletta. I don't know what the mystery is going on between her and and um, and Jim. But one thing for sure, they might probably be somewhat romantically linked behind behind Linda's back. I mean, she showed up kind of like mysteriously at his funeral. And yet she didn't even know who this person is. But, you know, even though he... But the thing is, what I liked about him is... He's actually playing a likable person. He's still a devoted husband and a caring father to his two girls. And the actresses who play the twin girl, the, not the, the two sisters, uh, Courtney Taylor Burnett and Cheyenne McClure, they also turned in some pretty great performances. Oh man, um, with one of the girls, when I saw her face all disfigured and scarred, I just wanted to go out there and I really wanted to give her a big hug because I kind of felt bad. At, her being scarred even though it was really at nobody's fault I mean she accidentally slipped and she crashed through a through a door window you know hey accidents do happen and no one should be at blame but it just kind of broke my heart when I seen it and of course during uh, Linda's uh, reverse day of the week, back in time situations, there are scenes where her daughter's face is all bruised up and then the next day her face is perfectly clear. So, you know, these uh, time traveling back and forth in time days, they really give you the pieces to the puzzle of what will happen you know, the following day, like one day it's going to be a Monday, the next day it's going to be a Saturday, then one day it's going to be a Friday, the next day it's going to be a Tuesday. So, you know, eventually it came to a point where Linda had to eventually had to draw some kind of a chart to recount the dates of what's going to happen or what will happen. And I thought that was kind of effective. 
But overall, the you know, it, it just kind of broke my heart to to see um, her daughter, her home, bruised up like that. Could have been worse, you know. But hey, she lived through the ordeal, so we'll give her a medal of honor. Anyways, uh, Julian McMahon definitely made you forget that he played Doctor Doom in the Fantastic Four comics. Because he's definitely not in Doctor Doom mode like in the Fantastic Four. So it was actually pretty cool to see him break away from typecast and not even thinking of Doctor Doom. Sadly, the ending just can't seem to get approved, mainly because the script by Bill Kelly was never fully completed, unlike his much more well-polished script, Blast from the Past. Meanwhile, Turkish-German director Manin Yapo takes it to an even greater low, as his camera movements tend to move around in a way that it becomes appalling which makes every scene at times uninspiring or uplifting. And there are many methods to represent a character's confusion and disorientation without giving its audience migraines. The direction, I mean, the di it's bad enough that we're looking through a confusing non-linear plot structure, but what we need is much more improved camera techniques in order for it to really capture that moment. His movements were very awkward at times, and it could have been a bit of a turn-off. So time travel really has been sort of a symbolical manifestation in the romantic fantasies. But writing about them is about as complex as it comes. So I'll give the credit for the, for the effort for Bill Kelly but I can't give him too much for a recommendation. For us to get into these situations, you have to make sense of it all. Premonition fails to accomplish that, which is too bad because I really thought the movie had the potential to be really good. Sandra Bullock and company definitely turned in terrific performances, but the details of the that the details to get the story underway seem to fail in delivery. Which goes to show that a good movie just isn't about the acting. You need a coherent story so that we can get more involved with the storytelling by the performers for a movie to sell. So while the movie does strive on strong performances by the cast and the ideas have the audience in wonderment, it still fails to make any logical connections to keep us involved with the characters. In addition to that, Yapo's camera work could use some greatly needed improvement in the future. Plus, there are some very disturbing footage with violent scenes, and there is still lots of foul language to keep advised. To keep advised. And for uh, trivia, for some trivia, this movie actually, believe it or not, was supposed to be filmed in New Orleans at the time. But because of uh, Hurricane Katrina, they had to relocate the movie. But in spite of all that, I really can't recommend this movie at all. Which is sad. I mean, it had a lot of good potential. It had some great arcs. But it just did not deliver the way I expected it. And it was mostly the script that kind of let it down. And the awkward direction from Meneniapo. That really, really turned it down. There was not very much uplifting scenes to make you like wonder and amazement. Like, what just happened? I mean, it was not. there was no tension grabbing. It just was like by the numbers, like, oh, one scene he's dead, next scene he's alive. What's going to happen next? Oh, he's dead again. 
there was no really uplifting backstory to go along with it. And so for that, I really can't recommend this movie too much. If I was to give a scale out of 10, I would have to give Premonition a 5. So I guess this ends my writer review. Thank you all for listening in. If you wish to subscribe to my channel, please feel go right ahead. If you wish to leave a comment, it would be my pleasure. Just remember, be kind, be courteous, and please refrain from any rude comments. And I will be back again with another review. So until next time, this is Eric Rodrider saying, keep watching those movies. And I will see you around. Goodbye.